My mind's eye opens before the light gets up. I lie awake in the small dark, figuring payments or how to scrape paint. I count rich women I didn't marry. I measure bicycle miles I pedaled last Thursday to take off weight. I give some passing thought to the point that if I hadn't turned poet, I might well be some other sort of accountant. Before the sun reports its own weather, my mind is openly at it. I chart my annual rainfall, or how I'll plant seed if I live to be fifty. I look up words like bilateral symmetry in my mind's dictionary. I consider the bivalve mollusk, repick last summer's mussels on Condon Point, preview the next red tide, and hold my breath. I listen hard to how my heart valves are doing. I try not to get going too early, bladder permitting. I mean to stay in bed until six. I think in spirals, building horizon pyramids, yielding to no man's flag but my own. I think a lot of Saul Steinberg. I play touch football on one leg. I seesaw on the old cliff, trying to balance things out job, wife, children, myself. My mind's eye opens before my body is ready for its first duty, cleaning up after an old maid basset in heat. That, too, I inventory. The Puritan strain will out. Even at six a.m., sun or no sun, I'm Puritan to the bone. Down to the marrow and then some. If I'm not sorry, I worry. If I can't worry, I count. North, the bear time, the same quick dark from Rutland to Nome, the utter chill, winter stars, after work splitting birch, by the light outside his back door, a man in Maine thinks what his father told him, splitting outside the same back door. Every November, his father said, he thought when he split wood of what his father said, the night right here he died. Just after supper, his father said, his father came out back, looked out at the sky the way he had for years, picked up his axe, struck the oak clean, and was himself struck down. Before he died, he just had this to say, this time of year. The stars come close, some fierce. Beside you, lying down at dark, my waking fits your sleep. Your tuning flares the slow banked fire between our mingled feet, and there, curved close and warm against the nape of love, held there, who holds your dreaming shape, I match my breathing to your breath. And sightless keep my hand on your heart's breast, keep night watch on your sleep to prove there is no dark nor death. On land, any length of rope that's hitched to something beyond itself and takes the strain is called the standing part. Tossed over a beam or a limb with a slip knot tied in the farther end, the standing part could be said to end in a noose. At sea, put to use, rope changes its name to line. The part spliced into an eye, or, say, made fast to a shackle. The part that does the work, that works, remains the standing part. Any loop or slack curve in the running part of the line, the part that's not working, becomes a bite. And the part of the running part that's let go, or finally eased off until there's no reserve left, is known as the bitter end, as it is in other events, ashore or at sea, that come to the end of the line. Sunday late, the winter dark already coming down, inside the woodshed door an early FM tuned to Bangor, half as old as the backyard oak he felled, Felled, fitted, split, an old man mad for music lugs the chunks in. He turns the volume up, up full, an opera he never saw, rises through the light snow and marshals its triumphant march. He marches, lifting stiff knees into high step, marking his own boot prints, 
shooting his victorious fist against a stand of second growth ranked naked against the sky. He lets the music take him as he assumes the music. Entering the city gates, he feels the blaze of banners, the shine on breastplates and the women's hair. He marches near the column's head, in his just place. The sun on the lead car is hot. The horses sweat with victory, a victory he hasn't felt in fifty years. Measure upon measure, the music pumps him higher. He marches, marches through his deep backyard. The chorus soars. The women's voices open every street. Their smiles are wide with glory, their lips already moist.